Lester, the number of people feared dead now 10,000. And that means that the death toll has gone up 10 times in less than 24 hours. Rescue teams are now starting to see the true horror of Super Typhoon Haiyan. The devastation is, uh, it's, it's I, I don't have the words for it. The loss of life is staggering. We have an estimate given on the casualties, more or less 10,000. That's in the hardest hit province. And as the numbers of dead continue to climb, 48 hours later, officials still can't be sure of the severity of the damage. It's a great a human tragedy. There's no power, there's no light. But what is becoming clear is that the worst of it is in the central islands of the Philippines. The eye of the giant typhoon slams straight into Tacloban, a city of more than 200,000 people. Survivors mourn the loss of life as they begin the grim but essential task of clearing the dead. Many have nowhere to go. The winds and the storm surge wiped away almost every home in the city. Tacloban's airport is strewn with wreckage, making it that much harder for the military and Red Cross to get aid to the suffering. Across the South China Sea, Vietnam is heeding the warnings. Even the tourists are hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. I'm quite frightened because we don't have anything like this. Uh, we've spoken to a few locals and they thought we'll be all right as long as we uh, stay indoors. This is now an international aid effort and the US military is standing by and will soon be involved at this airbase, which is now a rescue center. Thousands of people are gathering here hoping to get airlifted out of this province, which has been cut off for three days. Back to you. Angus Walker, thanks. Relief supplies, meantime, are pouring into the Philippines today as those rescue efforts intensify. Our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, has made her way to Cebu in the Philippines, where many of the storm's refugees are also trying to make their way in their search for help. Uh, Nancy, good morning. Give us a sense. What are you seeing as people try to make their way there? It's really an interesting mix of people at the largest Air Force base in this part of the country. People who have managed to get out of Tacloban, who are ca catching flights to Manila, while at the same time cargo planes are loading up supplies to get into town. And caught in the middle are people who live away from the city of Tacloban and are totally cut off from family and friends. They are hoping for the best, they are fearing the worst, and interestingly they are trying to get in just to see who's alive and who's not. Getting, getting relief and aid air in there is obviously a major issue, as we saw with the airport destroyed. You see pictures of the control tower blown out in Tacloban. When and how, do you have a sense of, of when and how that relief will start to make its way to some of those harder-hit areas? It looks from this vantage point as if it's been rather sketchy and a little slow, and certainly from a lot of the people on the ground, they had a lot of, a sort of anger and frustration because there obviously isn't fresh water, people have run out of food, and those who have um, made their way to Cebu claim that relief efforts just weren't getting in enough. But it's so easy to complain when, in fact, it's really hard once you have a fractured system. And with an airport that's not working and roads that have just now been opened in the last couple of hours, getting that kind of relief in is difficult. So the basics are tarps, water, canned foods and rice. And we watched the C-131 was being loaded with those kinds of supplies. The C-131s are on the tarmac and the relief efforts will go on tomorrow. They hope to get at least half a dozen planes from this area alone off and into the sky. Erica? All right.